Hello, Sigmas. In the mid 17th century, this guy over here, whose name is uh, Robert Hooke, discovered something really interesting and will be the subject matter of today's video. So, Robert Hooke, what he discovered was that if we have a spring, Right, and you apply a force F on the spring, right? Then the spring will also try to pull you in the other direction, right? But with what force does the spring pull you in the other direction? That was given by Robert Hooke. So according to Hooke, the spring force, that is a force exerted by the spring, is given by minus K X minus X naught. Where x naught is nothing but the natural length of the spring. That is the length of which the spring has when there are no forces on the spring. And x is the distance by which you pull the uh, spring. So basically uh, x minus x naught will give you the displacement from the natural length of the spring. What that means is if a spring, when there were not, no forces on it, if it had this length, I shall call this length as uh, let x naught. And if I pull it by a distance uh, x, right, this entire length is x. Then this is, this length is obviously x minus x naught. So, the force of a spring is directly proportional to x minus x naught. And if, if you remove the proportionality symbol, you get this uh, k, which is known as the spring constant. And what this uh, negative sign tells you is that the force is always in the opposite direction to the displacement. That is all that negative sign tells you. That is, if you stretch a sp uh, spring, it will try to compress itself. That is, it will always, add, uh, the force will always be in the opposite direction. If you stretch a spring in this direction, then the spring force will be in this direction. And if you compress the spring in this direction, then the spring force will be in this direction. Like the spring force will always be opposite to the direction in which you have displaced the spring. That is, the spring force is always directed towards the equilibrium length of the spring, which is this, this x naught. So if uh, this part of the spring was over here, when there were no forces on the spring, if you do apply forces on the spring, then it will be always directed towards this point, right? If you apply a force in this direction, the spring force will be towards the point. If you apply a force in this direction, the spring force will again be towards this point that I'm calling A. So that is known as the equilibrium length of the spring. And hence, the forces which uh, behave in this manner are known as linear restoring forces. So such forces which behave in this manner are known as linear restoring forces. Now Hooke's law is not always valid. It is valid only for very small displacements. Actually that depends upon the material of the spring. Now Consider a spring, right? Let's consider a spring. This video is all about springs. And then let's say you displace it from its equilibrium position. So if uh, this was uh, its uh, equilibrium position, x naught, 
and uh, you displace it from its equilibrium position by this much amount, then uh, delta x, right, which is x minus x naught. Then what you do is you release it. So first you stretch it and then you release it. And when you do that, what will you observe? The spring is going to oscillate about its main position x naught. So if that is x naught, the spring is going to oscillate. You first will go this side, then it will come back to its equilibrium position, then it will go this side, and then it will again come back to its equilibrium position and go this side. So that will be the motion of the spring like this. Right, it will oscillate back and forth about its equilibrium position. So this type of motion is known as simple harmonic motion. And uh, as we move forward and make more uh, videos, uh, you will realize that this uh, simple harmonic motion just appears everywhere in physics, right? From electrodynamics to mechanics to quantum mechanics, everywhere we have this simple harmonic motion. So if the motion of a simple harmonic uh, uh, oscillators, so these are not an oscillator. So if this motion is so special, then why not have an equation of motion for it? So let us quickly derive the equation of motion of a simple harmonic oscillator of the spring mass system. Right. So next what we are going to do is find the equation of motion. For that, what we well, what I want you to do is consider first let me draw a coordinate system and then a spring attached to it. Right, with a mass attached at an end. Uh, this is a mass M. And what I'm going to do now is displace this mass, right, in this direction, or uh, x distance apart. And the spring constant is k. Then, uh, as I've told you, the spring force on that mass would be Fs equal to minus into x, right? I've displaced it by an amount x. This x is nothing but delta x, which is that displaced. So, what do I get then? I will get m. This force would be the reason of the acceleration of that mass m. So, this force can be written as mass times the acceleration of the body t square x. That is how the x changes with time, second derivative, right? Is equal to minus kx. So I've not not done anything but just used Newton's second law. Mass times acceleration is equal to the force on that body. And uh, what that would give us is uh, d square x by rearranging the terms. You can easily see that I can write it in this manner. Plus k by m x is equal to zero. I've just taken this m right on the other side and then I took uh, the entire term over here and I get this. Now I'm going to define a new variable which I shall call omega which would be equal to under root of a by n. And uh, hence uh, what this equation will look like is something like this. x double dot using Newton's notation plus omega square x is equal to zero. This is the equation of motion of a simple harmonic motion, right? And uh, any system which obeys this kind of uh, equation is known as uh, a harmonic oscillator. So any system that obeys An equation of this form is called a harmonic oscillator. Now, you can easily see from this equation, as I have told you before, that 
what this equation tells us is that the displacement and acceleration are always in the opposite direction. That is, they have opposite signs. So, what this tells us is that the displacement and acceleration always have opposite signs. That means the acceleration is always opposite to the displacement as we have in the case of a spring mass system. Now, uh, the simple harmonic motion is actually a special case of uh, something that uh, we call periodic motion. Which is nothing but uh, the motion that uh, repeats itself regularly. Right. So, this is the definition of periodic motion. If uh, any motion is uh, repeating itself after some interval of time, then that motion is simply known as the periodic motion. Now, what do you think is the solution of this equation? Since we have an equation, we have to solve it and find x, right? This is nothing but a differential equation. Now, I'm not going to solve it uh, in this video, but uh, tell you directly the answer because solving it is actually something with for the math students. Actually, you will know how to solve it. And then you can read the various differential equation text to learn how to solve this kind of equation. And if you actually want me to make a video on how to solve this type of differential equations, do comment below that uh, you want me to make such a video. But if you solve it, then you will get x as uh, equal to a sine omega b plus b cos omega t. And if you doubt that uh, what I'm telling you might not be correct, and I'm simply saying that, then what you can do is if this x, you can substitute it in this equation. Let me call this equation one. So if you substitute x in equation one, you have to double differentiate it and then do this. Uh, and once you substitute equation x, you will see that uh, this x into that equation, you will find that you will get zero, right? So you can verify it in this manner. Sometimes uh, this can also be written as uh, C sine omega t plus phi, which I'm leaving as a homework to you. You have to verify that this equation is equivalent to this. Okay, where C is nothing but under root of A square plus B square. And uh, phi is uh, equal to 10 inverse of B by B. Now, there is a property of the simple harmonic motion that it satisfies this omega t is equal to 2 pi. That is, uh, the time, where t is the time it takes uh, for the system to complete one cycle. And uh, that t is uh, known as the so, P is uh, known as the period of motion. So, this is nothing but the period of motion. Omega is known as the angular frequency of motion. And C over here in this equation, the C is uh, known as the amplitude of motion. So this is known as the amplitude of motion.
and phi is known as the phase angle. So you have to know what is the quantities are called. Now a property of uh, the simple harmonic motion is that you have to notice that the frequency and hence the period, the frequency and period is independent of uh, amplitude. Now you have to take care that this is true only for simple harmonic motion and if a motion is not simple harmonic this will not be true. And uh, I'm going to tell you a uh, kind of a proof of uh, why this is uh, true. Right? So just imagine we have a spring mass system again. Okay. So this is a spring mass system. And I displace the spring mass by in the sense uh, x. Then you know that it will start oscillating about its uh, mean position, x naught. But what if I displace it even more? Right? Let's say x two, and let me call this x one. So x two is greater than x one. If I displace it even more, then it should take more time in reaching this place. Right? Well, not exactly. As you know from the equation of simple harmonic motion over here, you can easily see that the acceleration is uh, proportional. The acceleration is proportional to the displacement. You can easily see from here. So the acceleration is proportional to the displacement. That means that if I displace it by a larger amount over here, then its acceleration will also increase due to which it will cover the same distance in the same amount of time and will have the same period irrespective of how much you displace the spring mass system. Now let us speak about the units of the various quantities that we have spoken about in this video. Now the units of frequency frequency is actually equivalent to the number of cycles of per second. So it is the number of cycles per second. And its uh, SI unit is uh, hertz. So, so the units, if F is the frequency, then its units is uh, hertz. So this is equivalent to this is known as Hertz. Right, Hertz was a, a very famous uh, physicist uh, who worked on sounds, waves, oscillations and all this stuff. And uh, what are the units of angular frequency? The units of angular frequency is nothing but radians per second. Radians per second. Now actually, uh, this radiance uh, is uh, not a physical dimension. Here, this hertz is actually equal to 1 upon uh, uh, t, I would say. That is 1 upon time. So, it is actually has the SI units of 1 upon seconds, which means we can also write as hertz. But this radian is not a physical unit if you have learned what physical units are. You will know that. And hence, uh, actually the physical unit of angular frequency is equal to the physical unit of frequency, but they just differ by a factor of a 2 pi. That is, you must remember, this is very important, that omega is actually equal to 2 pi f. This is a very important result, right? This is a very important formula that you must remember. And that was all about springs. I will see you in the next video with more such interesting physics videos. But for that, you will have to subscribe to this channel and like this video to motivate me to create more such fun videos on physics. Thanks for watching.